The Bada Imam Bada is one of Lucknow's most iconic buildings and an engineering marvel. Completed in 1794 on orders of Nawab Asaf Uddala of Awadh, it is one of the largest arched constructions in the world, unsupported by any beams. But in August 2022, it made national headlines for all the wrong reasons when one of its parapets collapsed during heavy rains exposing the poor state of its maintenance sadly this is not the only case cracks have also been discovered in rumi darwaza another of lucknow's iconic buildings leading to an outcry in the city strangely the archaeological survey of india which is responsible for its maintenance has claimed that these cracks are 8 to 10 years old and are awaiting repairs what is more alarming is that almost a decade ago in 2013 iid kanpur carried out a structural study of the rumi darwaza and declared it the most vulnerable standing monument in the city The state of two of Lucknow's most famous monuments give us a glimpse of the issues facing heritage conservation in the city. Once the capital of the Nawabs of Awadh, Lucknow is home to hundreds of heritage buildings in various states of preservation or should we say ruin. The first wave of destruction happened just after the revolt of 1857. when the british carried out massive demolition of nawabi buildings in the city a number of palace complexes such as kaiser bagh were destroyed and individual buildings within them put to use as government offices schools colleges and private residences but long after the british things are as bad over the decades the city has lost a lot more of its heritage we spoke to vipul varshne the convener of intact lucknow who spoke to us about the issues facing the heritage buildings in lucknow starting with the fact that there is no single list of protected heritage buildings in the city there are two types of listing first firstly there is a list which is uh, in fact normally prepared by the government and of course there are other lists uh which are uh, prepared by certain bodies uh, ngos and voluntary organizations so intac is one of them and uh, in fact intac lucknow chapter uh, had prepared this list of unprotected heritage uh, buildings in the year 2015 and uh, that that is the list which includes uh, protected um, uh, monuments and the unprotected monuments private and government all kind of uh, buildings um which has a uh, her- heritage value and uh, you you want the number then it's almost like 251 buildings in the cities with active heritage movements such as mumbai chennai and kolkata there are heritage committees which are in place to look into the issue of listing and delisting of heritage buildings but no such committee is active in lucknow city there is a heritage committee which was formed almost like say um 6 to 7 years back uh by then government under the chairmanship of commissioner lucknow um and it had uh, all uh, kind of experts all sort of experts in terms of uh, archaeology history um uh, other uh, creative arts um then uh, of course um, architects and planners and various from various fields uh so it worked it was like sort of active for a year or two but for the last 5 6 years we haven't have a meeting um, as yet um, by now One of the main issues with heritage preservation in Lucknow has been the inconsistency in the government policy. With the change in the governments, old policies are abandoned and new ones are made. This inconsistency in the policy makes heritage preservation difficult. 
Take for example the case of Chhatar Manzil, one of the few surviving palace complexes in Lucknow. Constructed in the 1780s, it housed the Central Drug Research Institute from 1950 till 2013. While the original plans were to convert it into a cultural museum and a reinterpretation center, the government has recently decided that it will be made into a heritage hotel. was changed quite a lot so uh, now after like after say 6 to 7 years back it was planned as a uh, reinterpretation center a cultural uh, museum and a uh, lot many plans were drawn up in fact intact was the first one who prepared the dpr and the uh, total uh, proposals uh, total uh, detailed plans were submitted to the government the chief minister of uttar pradesh and then the principal secretary also uh, then further changes were made it was uh, shelved almost for 2 to 3 years then again it was opened up it was total uh, sort of red tapism and then uh, it was opened up and uh, then it was given to some other body now what i hear is um, it's now uh, uh, rather would be designed as a heritage uh, hotel that's the latest uh, news which has come up from the government side that uh, most of the heritage buildings which are existing in the city would be readapted as heritage hotels that's very uh, confusing and rather disheartening also for the people uh, of lucknow or for any city for that matter because uh, uh, we were uh, the the denizens were very happy when we uh, all heard about uh, being converted into readapted into reused into an interpretation center culture city cultural museum and uh, uh, not many hopes were raised and people uh, got uh, very excited and lot many a lot a lot of enthusiasm was there but uh, it was very uh, slow paced work but still there was hope but then uh, with the change of uh, uh, the chair or whatever the political the political uh, system and then again uh, it was the whole planning was revised and uh, now this is the latest news we hear that it will be readapted into an hotel the issue with the maintenance of iconic buildings like the rumi darwaza and the bada imam bada is that they are jointly managed by the waqf board the government of up and the archaeological survey of india This has led to bureaucratic delays in the maintenance of these buildings. Actually, uh, if you see that uh, it's not in sole custody or the 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 protect the maintenance part is not uh, just the waqf or uh, for that matter the government. Even the part of the government the part of the uh, government officials uh, part uh, some of the officials are part of their uh, that uh, body. so that works board so uh, uh the point if if uh, like we uh, nobody uh, owns the problem nobody says that it's a it's 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 an issue like uh, who is responsible for the maintenance the government says the work will do the work says that asi will do and in this confusion it's the basically the the building which is the heritage which is victimized Most of the heritage buildings in Lucknow are privately owned and the owners need assistance on how to maintain these buildings using the right materials and techniques. Intact Lucknow runs a conservation institute in the city that provides this knowledge free of cost to the building owners. Intact has a conservation institute in the heart of the city, the Aliganj area and by the name of ICI Uh, and uh, it has all it provides all the expertise free of cost in the limestone masonry structures and uh, we keep on having time to time training program in this uh, uh, lime mortar uh, structures how the work um, the um, uh, skill uh, development programs where uh, the um, uh, skill is uh, being trained uh, being given to the workers how to go about uh, for 
in these kind of structures and what are the limitations what are the challenges how to overcome them so this is one institute which is um, which is working very well while the residents of lucknow take great pride in the culture of the city there is a sense of disconnect between the citizens and the heritage buildings journalist devanshi seet the founder of nowlucknow.com an online guide to the city of lucknow has been chronicling the cultural activities and events in the city she shares her perspectives of the issues facing heritage buildings in the city beginning with the basic lack of identification of what these buildings are first of all i think the biggest issue is that uh, there isn't any identification really of what really is a heritage building there are businesses shops commercial establishments homes that have come up in heritage buildings who is responsible for those heritage buildings is the owner responsible the government the asi so that fixing the responsibility for me i think that is the biggest issue before we even start putting anybody in charge of doing the job before we say like you know the government is not doing this or the asi has not done this or whatever i think first we need to identify what really are these heritage buildings that are everywhere that we go you enter the marketplace and you're actually entering a heritage building in lucknow right so whether it's the it's hazrat ganj you know which is such a beautiful marketplace which has been which is uh, trying to modernize itself but uh, i think the essence is really in the the heritage that we are we're losing gradually so for me that is the biggest issue identification while there is rising awareness among the residents of lucknow about the need to preserve their heritage there is no concerted citizens led movement in this regard while the recent cases of damage to the bada imam bada and the rumi darwaza have led to a public outcry they die out over time compounding this is the inconsistency in the government policy which changes with each new government they were very actively doing these things but of late i see that there's no steam in these movements very honestly i think uh, these are very uh, uh, seasonal things you know when they pick pace yes when a building crumbles we hear a lot of citizens making noise about it but really there is no consistent effort right now as of today that i see coming from any one particular group or group of people or a community saying that there has to be a concerted effort to preserve our heritage buildings there is no pressure on the policy makers to really take action i think one of the reasons is that you know when the governments change or when the administrations change you know so the people who uh, we have to connect with they all have varied degree of interest uh, in these matters sometimes there is a person who comes to the helm who is actually interested in preserving uh, heritage buildings or who takes an active interest initiative to do these things when there is a person like that at the helm it becomes easier for even citizens to approach them talk to them and you know get things to uh, th- get things going but every government comes with their own set of priorities agenda uh, for everyone preservation of heritage buildings especially is not a priority clearly it might be a priority if it's a five year government it might be a priority that comes maybe three years down the line but for those first three years nobody knows who to go to nobody knows whether there will be some action taken in while on one hand the heritage buildings of lucknow face government and public apathy the interest in the city's intangible heritage like its cuisine music dance poetry and even its famed textiles is thriving lucknowi restaurants are opening up all over india and the old recipes of the nawabi era are being revived like never before two of the city's most famous textile traditions the zardozi and chicken curry work are being interpreted for new age fashion as is interest in classical music and urdu poetry i think that is something that lucknow has always seen like a, that that scene is thriving if we don't take into account the last 2 uh, years which were the covid years of course which saw a lull in all kinds of cultural activities across the globe 
uh, if you don't take that into account, I think uh, there is still great, uh, you know, uh, energy when it comes to cultural activities, whether it's a Dastan Goy, whether it's a classical music event. In fact, in the last one month, I've seen more events than ever before happening on the cultural scene, especially music. And I'm very happy to say that a lot of these initiatives are also government initiatives, you know, not just uh, happening through uh, private uh, organizations. And these are uh, events which attract a good audience as well. So I see a lot of youngsters also attending these events because as a part of now Lucknow, we do a lot of tracking of what events are happening in the city and what is really getting attention. So I see that a lot of youngsters do want to connect with their roots. And uh, yes, there is a lot of fusion as well happening. So maybe, um, you know, if there is a, a there, there are new genres of music which are coming up, which actually bring classical music and modern aspects of music together. And I think that's fair because as long as we are getting to the youngsters and we are making sure that they uh, have some part of that heritage also coming down to them, I think it's great if we can do it through fusion as well. The former Chief Information Commissioner of India Wajahat Habibullah is one of the old residents of Lucknow city and has seen the city evolve over the last seven decades. He believes that while there has been a decline in the level of maintenance of the classical heritage or the Nawabi buildings in the city, overall the situation is far better than what can be seen in other cities. The old heritage, which is the classic heritage, the Nawabi heritage, that is relatively, now I know, notice I'm using the word relatively, relatively well maintained. The state of that heritage is in fact much better than uh, Delhi. Except you know what those monuments are, the archaeological survey with their monuments, the other heritage, uh, non-ASI non, non structures, so have been badly, even in the Hummel with Toglak's Jahapana, you will hardly find traces of it in Delhi. But compared to that, Lucknow is much better. And Lucknow still has distinct features of its uh, Ayodhya heritage, its Kutna heritage. Uh, you probably know that when Majlis Qatar was declared, uh, the, uh, the Nawab Wazir of Awad by his mother, Hazrat Mahal in 1857, the, the noise in cities, the, the, the wounds get there. That was Hamare Kanhiya, Hamare Kanhiya. But that, I think, typifies what Lucknow is. Uh, recently, uh, there was a beautiful old gate in front of my house in Hadrat Gunj, leading to, a, uh, leading to a, uh, an Imam Bara, dedicated to Amjad Ali Shah, who was the father of Wajid Ali Shah. And the gate had collapsed. And it was being reconstructed. And it's now, in fact, even better than the earlier uh, So the, the monuments are there. Uh, their state of maintenance leaves much to be desired. Uh, in fact, I do believe that Lucknow as a city has a much richer heritage, and it's not only archaeological. It's in terms of food, language, social relations, much richer than, say, a uh, number one tourist attraction like uh, Jaipur. But uh, this has not really been kept up and there has been, as I said, a decline in the level of it. The uh, citizens of Lucknow. I told you about social relations with Lucknow. Lucknow is a unique city in this regard in that all its residents regard the city as its own. Now, when I say that, uh, you must uh, bear in mind the city is comprised, of course, of the older residents like myself, but also a number of refugees, six Sindhis. In fact, till very recently, a landmark feature of Hazrat Ganj was Ram Advani Bookmaker, books, who was a refugee from Lahore. But if you were to ask him where he was from, he would say, I'm from Lucknow. If you went into his store, you would find every kind of book the rarest of the rare on Lucknow. Why? Because he valued the Lucknow heritage. It is a great national heritage, a very great national heritage. So that is basically 
there are certain, of course, you're right, have gradually been recently restored. A lot of credit goes to uh, Chief Minister Mayavad, who built a number of, you know, uh, gardens and stupas and buildings dedicated to Lord Buddha. The elephant is a characteristic eater there. But she's probably the greatest builder uh, in Lucknow since Asif uh, But that being the case, I was talking of the classic heritage buildings. Their maintenance is not, for example, the Kaisar Bagh, which was, of course, badly destroyed in 1827. The palace itself is now a dancing school. If these are retained, so why I say these would be retained as hotels, uh, convention centers, uh, places where people come to visit cafes, uh, then they would be in a state of, of they, they, they no, 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 antiques. They then looked upon as living one. And they have that life. Why? Because so society of Lashnav is sad. They can have that life. And also, the kind of cuisine that is served in today's Lashnav is not very different to those that was perfected, outward perfected, in the time of the Nawabs. Wajahat Habibullah believes that the government can make policies and facilitate heritage conservation to help private homeowners in the city. Government can help by having a kind of policy. A policy which, uh, and it has a policy. If your building, if your home is declared a heritage building, then you cannot make modif modifications to its structure. Our building, I told you, I was telling the Imam Bara that is in front of our building, on the other side of the room. But when we were repairing our house, repairs, of course, earned us an intact home. Uh, the uh, ASI uh, regional director sent us a notice that we are changing, altering the structure of the house. If the, if the, uh, if what it means is that you cannot alter the structure, you cannot. Uh, you, you, if you, if that's, if it's imaginatively here, to maintain the uh, uh, the uh, facade while changing the structure or something of that nature, that's the kind of thing they have in Washington D.C. I know that because I was responsible for installing a memorial to Mahatma Gandhi in Washington D.C. in Newport Circle, and so I had to go into great detail about what kind of changes are possible. So this kind of policy can be implemented, and particularly. Certain cities should be declared as heritage cities. Get experts. Don't ask the local government. Yes, there will be people in the local government, like my friend Mishran, who is the present secretary of tourism, who is now devising this concept. The trouble is, you know, that come with what happens. I devise a beautiful concept. Everyone says, ha, ha, very good award. Can I go in somebody else? Come in? No, no, this is not good enough. We want something else. So therefore, there has to be a there should be a government to come up with a policy after consultation with large numbers of people. Yes. But on a more positive note, the government of Uttar Pradesh has drafted a new tourism policy which has not yet been implemented. This policy gives great emphasis on the readaptation of heritage buildings into heritage hotels, homestays, boutiques, and cultural centers. The government says the government of UP is coming up with a draft policy for promotion of tourism in Lucknow. And central to that is the restoration of its architectural heritage and commercializing it when you may criticize the fact that they're commercializing the heritage, but by trying to revive uh, these monuments by making them monuments to be put to present use. I mean, now, and it has to be done very carefully, of course, because we don't want them to arrive over there and make a glass uh, structure and they say Chatar Manzi. So they said, now, this is the new Chatar Manzi. So obviously, that has to be carefully managed. It's hoped that this new policy, once implemented, would greatly assist in preservation and maintenance of the city's historic buildings. While the heritage buildings in Lucknow face the same challenges as those in other cities in India, the culture here is fast adapting with the times. And it is this ability to adapt and reinvent that has taken the Lucknowi culture beyond the city to people around the world. <laughs>